Hello everyone, Andy here. You might know me from such hit movies as Why I Like to Lose at Tournaments, or the recent Warhammer Community article about Azrael, where they featured only the best painters in the world, and my model was in the image header. Oh yeah. You might also know me from the guy that says at least once per video that he hates painting. Well, I'm here to teach you how to do bone armour like a walk-on pro. Wraithbone spray, seraphim sepia all over, dry brush wraithbone. That's it. There's no trick. There's no hidden technique in the dry brush. Anyone can do it. That's literally the whole of it. Well, uh, hmm. Well, that didn't take long at all, did it? Well, with the bone armor segment of the video finished, let's just go through everything, you know, that there is to do with Azrael. Uh, but since he's already finished, in the background, I'm painting up a Primaris Calgar with a clock in the background that I'm tapping off uh, and on. Uh, so I'm tapping it off when I'm waiting for the drying and then on when I'm painting. So we can see the time with brush on the model versus drying time. Fun stuff. First things first. If you like the look of anything at all on Azrael, I cannot stress enough that it was just a single thick coat of contrast. There is no special technique. I will never use the term glazing, I will use the term quaffing. I will only wet blend out of impatience of drying times. I bob ross it and everything is a happy little accident. But I must stress, of course, I'm not actually happy. Azrael took me, if we don't include drying time, probably around an hour and a half to paint. I didn't time it, I'm just guessing. And I'm not a fast painter. As Grim Dark Sun on Instagram memed, I just like to get it done. And that's not only the most polite an online commentator has ever been about my painting, it's also true. I don't really care about my models looking good for the gram. In fact, due to my lack of painting love, I kind of malign the whole Instagram thing. I don't connect with it at all. I don't want to push my painting to the next level. I just want to get it done. I finish a model and say at least I got it done. Honestly, uh, everything in my life is the same. It really just sums me up as a person. At least I got it done. And that was exactly the way I approached Azrael. I wanted to get him done ASAP to a minimum quality for a character model. All contrast, super fast. Okay, okay, right. You wanted bone armor talk, let's do it. We start with a blackened model. We then give a zenithal spray of wraith bone. Let's break that down. Why are we doing that? What is the end effect? Why am I about to stop doing a zenithal spray on all of my models. Okay, so the zenithal spray on a model provides inbuilt shading, right? The underside of the model, depending on the angle of the zenithal, will be completely black. And as we are using all contrast, that means we have no way to apply colour to it. You know that. What a boring statement you've heard in every single video. Let's look at the difference. Here on the Azrael model, we can indeed see from a low angle his underparts are black. That's great. And if we look at him straight on as he might be photographed for the gram, due to his pose, we can maybe imagine that some of the underparts are creating a darker overall look for the model and imply shading that we didn't have to manually add ourselves. Super duper. As soon as we go even slightly above the model, all of that is lost. And if you recall, I don't care about the gram. So, the zenithal step is completely pointless for me, hence why I might stop doing it. But, before we leave the zenithal conversation, I realised a long time ago that the zenithal did nothing for me. I like bold and bright colours, so the models can be seen from far away and show up well in an overhead shot on a camera. So, for a time, I played around with alternatively positioned zenithals. This started with me trying to replicate the Curse City box art. Very stylized, but all of the paint, but you know, all of painting is a, is a stylistic choice, right? Using odd angles and odd colors as a zenithal can create amazing, instantly highly stylized models. I've used it to paint all of my Into the Dark terrain uh, as an underglow to represent my demons being summoned magically. I applied it to my Hunter Clade to get a zenithal gradient from the side, the only sort of zenithal that uh, kind of isn't done just for the up close of the, for the Gram style picture. I didn't go any further with this, actually, uh, because it only works from one angle. But it's a concept, you know, and it looks interesting from one angle. Um, consider this my non-metallic metal revolution, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. Is this where I give my hot take on Slapjob? No, no, no. That'll be another video. Not yet, not yet. Uh, anyway, anyway, that's the zenithal, right? That's the zenithal talk done, hopefully, 
in the video there you saw the difference between the up and the down and then how it looks at the different angles and you can kind of extrapolate the purpose of it and if it suits you. Let's talk about bone armor done my way or done clean. I do it quick and dirty because that's just me all over, you know. As mentioned, uh, I just want to get it done. This isn't me trying to be grimdark or like inspired by John Blanche with my heavy brush strokes. I don't care. But some people like a clean bone armour. And if you want that, then you do a pin wash of Seraphim Sepia instead of an overall wash. That's it. That's the only difference. Uh, in fact, here are some Stormcasts I did ages ago and how clean the pin wash can look. It takes a bit longer, but honestly, it still doesn't take that that long to do. You can do the pin wash with or without the Zenithal. I think the pin wash works better for bigger models where, in my opinion, the dry brush method fails hard because it doesn't get on well with large flat surfaces. If you look at the background of these pictures, these videos, you'll see the Dreadnought, the vehicles. I did some up closes of the Dreadnought for you so you can see what it actually looks like. You can make up for it with battle damage, of course, whether you choose to paint it on like with the Stormcast uh, or sponge it on for a more casual kind of uh, distress look. Also, when it comes to the dry brush, let's say, like on Azrael's Red Cloak, even though I knew it wasn't going to be bone armor, I still hit it with the Seraphim Sepia and Wraithbone dry brush. Why? Because it was quicker. And I'd rather have a uniform color over the entire cloak than to have the occasional splotch or just the edges change to be a different color. The bright red will hide those mistakes, but if, it was, if I was using a less vibrant color, then it would show through. And there you go. My thoughts and examples on bone armor and zenithals. The two things that make all of my models look the way they do, regardless of which color I then quaff all over it. And I said I was going to go over the rest of Azrael, but uh, if you've watched me painting Kalgar, you can clearly see I don't need to, right? It's literally just one thick coat of contrast paint. Some asked how did I get that red on the cloak? My boys, literally just a single coat of Blood Angel's red contrast over the top of the, ba over the, top of the base color, right? Nothing. I am painting by numbers as quickly as I can. If I ever want to get back to my models, uh, then there's plenty of room for me to add like OSL glows and proper edge highlights and properly done weapons. But for my purposes, it's just so unnecessary. The only other thing to consider is the way you match colors. I love big, bright and bold contrasting colors. I get real garish with it. My orcs are reviled by many, but I think they look great. The easier to see on camera, the better, in, in my opinion, like very genuinely. I do not care at all how it looks when it's, you know, the full focus of a macro lens fitted DSLR. Literally don't care. Uh, I would, however, like to stress my one bugbear of hobby and how important a base is for the model. I know you know how important a base is if you've made it this far into the video. But please, God, base your models correctly. Do not go on, on online and ask for color help with an unbased model. Your base changes everything. No one can give you help if they don't know what base your model will have. I base my models before painting them. Look at my Corsairs here. Based but unpainted. You know why? Because from a top-down camera, once it's based and has a single color on it, it looks done. The same level of done as any other model. On the table, Golden Demon Winner and Unpainted But Based are the same quality from the angle that I care about. That's about it. That's my uh, based talk. And with the video over, I do feel I just want to add at the end, yes, the entire concept of me being good at painting is 100% a joke. I'm not a good painter. I'm a good enough painter. It is a funny joke that my model ended up on Warcom, that's all. All of my regular viewers are in on this joke. However, to those that don't like my painting and actively bully me for it, because yes, FYI, my most negative interactions in Warhammer have been from painters literally online bullying me for my painting ability. I'm just going to link you to this Warcom article, and that's the real win here. Anyway, everybody, contrast and dry brush yourselves to happiness. Screw the gram. Goodbye.